So a little over a month ago now, there was a commenter on one of my videos. It was on the verse of the day for September 28th. The commenter's username or handle on YouTube is GrahamOggle-E4T. We got into a discussion on the differences between the LDS doctrine and other Christians. With, of course, him trying to convince me to repent and, you know, we're all, Mormons are all heretics, so we all need to repent and become Protestant. When I pointed out the faults in his logic, he put a link to a video and told me that if I would just watch the video, it would explain everything, and hopefully I would repent. I watched the video, it explained nothing. But I did tell him that I would make a response to this video. So that is what I'm doing here. I said I'd have it done by the end of October, but I'm a little late. Now, this video is from one Sam Shamoun. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. He is of Syrian descent, I believe. And most of his content is anti-Islam apologetics. He is there to convince or argue against Muslims and show them that Christianity is the true religion. This is a video that he does speaking about the LDS Church, and so I am responding to it. This video, from what I can tell, is a member of the church was speaking to a friend, and he was told about the Sam Shemown guy, and he checked out a couple of videos, was intrigued, reached out, and they agreed to have a discussion. The video in question is not their entire discussion. You'll see the video, much like a Zoom call, was Sam on the left side and the member on the right. I, I'm not giving the member's name, and it doesn't matter that much. But the video is not their entire discussion. It kind of just jumps in. There's no introduction, and there's no real ending. It's just a cut, a 13-minute cut out of their complete discussion. Being 13 minutes, I don't want to take a lot of time and react to the whole thing at once, so I'm probably splitting this into at least two videos, probably three. Now, before we actually watch this, I do want to say, this is not my first attempt at filming a response to this video. I have tried to do a response at least two other times, but both times just didn't feel right. Something about it, I mean, I, I made a response, I even planned it out, I almost wrote out a script instead of just taking some notes, but it just didn't feel right. Something was nagging at me, saying, no, this is not the response that this video needs. And I was going back through some of what I'd already done in some of my notes, and I came to the conclusion that there was one thing, there was one thing that needed to be said about this video. So now we're going to listen to the first three, maybe four minutes of this video. But pay attention to the framing of the discussion. That's what I want to talk about in this video. The framing of the discussion. Because there's something very important, very vital, that we all need to understand when it comes to framing the discussion. So now let us bring it up and let us hear what they have to say. A friend had shown me some of your videos and I thought they were um, very good message and I... Very good what? I see that you're prolific with speaking to everybody and, and my friend said, oh, you should go talk to him and I... How long have you, uh, you been part of your church? I know you guys don't like to be called Mormons, but that's how we know oh, you yeah. guys. I grew up in it. Hmm. So you, you're a lifelong member of the LDS, huh? Yes. Okay, good. So, yeah. So you reached out to me. I just want people to know. You reached out to me. So I said, all right, come on. You said you wanted to debate. So I said, okay, let's do it. So obviously, you know the differences. We who hold to the Christian faith that was taught before Joseph Smith do not have the same concept of the Godhead you do. Correct? Correct. Yeah. So I know you're going to be honest because sometimes people evade. So you do believe that the God whom you call the Father was a man, right? This is where we start. Notice the framing that Sam Shemown has created here in his very first question. I'm assuming you know the difference between what you believe and what the Christian faith believed before Joseph Smith. He is framing this saying, we are going to look at this only from the Protestant perspective. We are not going to allow any other perspective in this. That's what he's saying. He is taking control of the conversation with this framing question. And that is where there should have been the first pushback. Now, I don't blame the member in this video. I don't know who he is. Most members are not prepared for this kind of discussion. Honestly, at the time, I might have made the same error and let that slide. But on this point, there should have been two points of contention immediately. As soon as he framed it that way, a difference between what you believe and what the Christian faith believe. First of all, 
We are Christian. Anyone who says otherwise is trying to control the discussion. They are trying to manipulate the language to divide us or separate us from Christ and his scriptures. That is the intent, to say that we are not Christian. He doesn't state directly that we're not Christian. He gives a subtle insinuation to separate us. So first of all, no, we are Christian. Let's get that straight. If we can't agree on that point, then further discussion will not matter. But then we also have to see, he's looking at before Joseph Smith, the Protestant perspective. All these other guys, they all believe the same thing. Everybody before Joseph Smith believed the same thing, if you let this question stand. I don't believe that is true. The doctrine of the church shows us that that is a false idea. It is a denial of the great, of the great apostasy. All these churches, if you go backwards in time, from the time of Joseph, just before Joseph Smith, all the way back, they're all in apostasy. They all have false doctrine. They all are false gospels. But you go back far enough, you'll get the true gospel. And in this case, to get a record of the true gospel, you really have to go all the way back to the Bible. And so when he asks this question, you know the difference between what you teach and what the Christian faith believed before Joseph Smith? No. I know the difference between what our church teaches and what Protestants teach. Protestants did not exist before the 1100s, 1200s, somewhere in there. I can't remember the exact date. But Luther, John Calvin, that's the beginning of Protestantism. If you go before that, you have Catholics, you have the Eastern Orthodox, you have the Coptics, but they all started in the 300s, 400s. They don't trace back to the beginning. They claim to, but they don't. They started in the 2nd or 3rd century AD. You go back before them, we'll get a true Christianity. We'll get a true gospel. And if you do go back that far, you will find many of the doctrines that are taught by the church that are denied by modern Christianity. Now, even then, there's a lot of corruption because the church was already falling into apostasy. During the time of the apostles in the New Testament, the church was already falling into apostasy. They were fighting against it. So there's still a lot of corruption in there. you got to search for it. But everything the apostles taught is taught in the LDS church. And I would say half of it is not taught by Protestants or Catholics or Eastern Orthodox or any other Christian denomination. We are the only ones that actually teach what the Bible says. Don't let others frame the discussion. Don't let others take control of the discussion and try to force our doctrine into a Protestant framework. This question should have been answered, no. I know the difference between what we believe and what you believe, but what we believe is what Christ and his apostles taught. Let us continue watching this, and we'll see a little bit more of, a, as I say, this framing of the discussion. Yes, I do. So you do. So he was a man, and he was elevated to Godhood, correct? Yes. yes. Okay, good. It's probably like, yeah, there's probably a lag, guys, so be patient. So then he also have, you also have a spiritual mother, right? Yes. And his first son is Yahweh, or Jehovah, as you like to call him? Yes. And Jehovah's younger brother is Lucifer, correct? Yes, one of them. Okay. And you and I, we existed there as spirit children of Heavenly Father and Mother, and we were sent in body so that if we follow the process, the steps outlined by your church, that you then one day can be a God too, correct? Yes. Very honest. I appreciate that. I appreciate that you're very honest. Now, prior to Joseph Smith, <clears throat> where can you find among those differing Christian groups, especially from the scriptures, that God the Father was a man who became God? I can't think of any groups that would have taught that, but I would say that when Jesus Christ says, I've only done what I've seen the Father do, that's a reference to the Father having gone through a So the Father was born of a vision? No, I don't know how the Father came to be. But you just misapplied John 5, 19. That's what you're misquoting. Because Jesus, and he's talking about present tense. He's not talking about the past. That he only does what he sees currently the Father doing. We're going to end it there for this video because I want to discuss John chapter 5 here specifically in the next video. But notice this. His, other, his question again. 
is trying to force a Protestant framework. Can you name any group before Joseph Smith that taught this? In other words, what he is saying here, what his implication is by asking this question, is that if it doesn't agree with the Protestant framework, if it doesn't agree with the Protestant ideas, then it must be false. If you can't prove that a Protestant taught this, if you can't prove that a group that existed before Joseph Smith taught this, then it has to be false. That is the argument, the subtle, implicit, or implied argument that is being made here. If you can't point to it before Joseph Smith, then it must be false. The problem with this is, again, it's forcing his ideas. He's saying, you have to fit your doctrine to my ideas. No, no, we don't. I reject your ideas. Your ideas are false. Your ideas are apostate ideas. I am not going to try and force the true gospel into an apostate framework. It's not going to happen. I don't care if no other Christian denomination from the time of Christ till now taught this doctrine. It doesn't matter because God has revealed it today. Most every prophet has revealed something new that nobody before them knew especially those who open up a new dispensation. When Moses told the Israelites to build the Ark of the Covenant, did they go back and say, wait a minute, Abraham never talked about this. We never had Noah telling us about this. Why should we do it? No. When God said, Noah, build this Ark, he didn't go back and say, oh, wait a minute, the prophets who came before me, none of them ever believed in this Ark. Why should I? No, he didn't. And when Isaiah prophesied that Christ would be born of a virgin, Did the Jews say that can't be true because no prophet before you has believed that? God wouldn't reveal anything new to you, so this whole argument is nonsense when you actually think about it. Paul himself stated that in times past, God spoke to his prophets, but in our day, he spoke to us through his son. Does that mean that we should reject Christ because the prophets before him didn't? This is a new revelation. This is a new economy for God, and I'll I'll show you right here. Of course, Sam Schmann will reject this because it's not in the Bible. But it doesn't matter that it's not in the Bible. It's still but God. It's still revelation. God speaking to man. And what does he tell us here? Section 121 of the Doctrine and Covenants, verses 26 through 28. God shall give unto you knowledge by his Holy Spirit, yea, by the unspeakable gift of the Holy Ghost, that has not been revealed since the world was until now, which our forefathers have awaited with anxious expectation to be revealed in the last times which their minds were pointed to by the angels as held in reserve for the fullness of their glory, a time to come in the which nothing shall be withheld. Whether there be one God or many gods, they shall be manifest. So we need to remember that in these last days, God has revealed things that nobody before knew. There are things in our doctrine today that you will not find a record of before this modern era. There are things that Joseph Smith taught, and even some things that later prophets taught, that were not revealed in previous generations. When people say, oh, where does the Bible say that? Our answer shouldn't be to scramble and find a Bible verse that possibly hints at it. Our answer should be, it doesn't matter. God has revealed it to us in this day. It doesn't matter what he revealed 2,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago. The records are vital to show us what God has done in the past. But if we are only looking to the past and saying, if God didn't do it before our day, then he won't do it in our day. That's not what the Bible teaches. Remember Peter He was given the revelation to take the gospel to the Gentiles. Many of the Jews questioned this because nothing in their scripture indicated that the gospel would go to the Gentiles. They thought that this was not part of the church because they were looking back on what God had done in the past. And if they looked back and all they could see in their scriptures was God working with Israel. So when God tells Peter, no, it is now time to go to all people, they questioned it. But Peter said, no. God has told us to do this now. Now is when we will do it. It doesn't matter what was going on in the past. We understand that God did great things for our forefathers. And there are great lessons to be learned and great doctrine that we can learn in the Bible and in the Book of Mormon and in all the ancient records. But we also have the doctrine and covenants. We have the revelation of our day. And if we are going to ignore it in favor of the revelation 
of a previous day, then we will never have the true gospel. Don't let others force you into their framework of thought. Know that it doesn't matter if no other Christian group before now taught our doctrine. It doesn't matter if it's not even found in the Bible, because God has revealed it today, and that is all that matters. Don't let others control the discussion. We are to be boldly proclaiming the truth, not backing ourselves into a corner trying to justify ourselves according to Protestant theology. That will end this part one. We will watch a little bit more of this video in the next portion and talk about John chapter 5. Not sure if I said any of this in quite the right way, but if you enjoy my responses to videos, if you enjoy what I'm doing on this channel, like, subscribe, ring the notifications, comment, share, all those good things that get the word out, that spread this channel. And if you have made it this far, comment proper framing, and I will see you in part two.